This video is intended for a class 11 student. It's on Pascal's law. So fluid mechanics. Yeah. So uh, let's begin. Static fluids. What? What? What's happening? I'm sorry about that. You'll have to um, excuse me. Uh, my friend was choking. I had to go save his life. Yeah, trust me, this sort of stuff happens to me all the time. Speaking of saving lives though, uh, do you know what I did there? What I did was called the Heimlich Maneuver, or it's called the Heimlich Maneuver. And uh, what I basically did was I made a fist and I pressed into his stomach and whatever he was choking on just flew right out of his mouth. So, how does that work exactly? What's the science behind it? Well, the science is the science of pressure in static fluids. And no discussion about pressure is complete without talking about one French physicist and mathematician, Blaise Pascal, or as my school physics teacher would have called him, Blaise Pascal. I'm just kidding, Blaise Pascal. So, uh, I urge you to Google him. He's really interesting. Uh, when he was still a teenager, he was working in pioneering research in mathematics. I mean, how cool is that? He was also a physicist. He invented the mechanical calculator. He was a writer. He was a philosopher. There's a lot. Uh, but sadly though, he died at the young age of 39. Uh, but he did leave us with a world of knowledge to fill our lives. Okay, so uh, let's now get into what Pascal told us about how fluids behave. Yeah, but before that, let's do a quick recap of what we already know. We know what fluids are. We know that uh, we're assuming fluids to be ideal, that is incompressible, their densities don't change. Uh, we know that we know what pressure is. We know that fluids exert pressure and that if you have two points like this P1 and P2 Separated by a height h then the pressure difference between those two points is given by P2 minus P1 is equal to rho g h uh, Rho is the density of the fluid and g is the acceleration due to gravity as you know P2 and P1 are the pressures at the lower and higher points respectively. So this much you already know. Now let's play around with this result. Suppose I take those two points and without changing the relative height difference between them, I move them around in the fluid. Now we know that the density of the fluid doesn't, uh, it doesn't change. The acceleration due to gravity doesn't change assuming the height h is very small compared to the radius of the earth. So if that's the case, if rho, g and h are constant between these two points p2 and p1, then wherever they are, this result must hold p2 minus p1 is equal to rho g h. That's simple enough. So if that's true, then suppose I do this, I move the point such that p1 which is the top point is now at the surface then the pressure at P1 what would it be? We know that air is a fluid yeah so it must exert some pressure at the surface of this fluid so let's call that the atmospheric pressure P0 so the pressure P1 is equal to P0 that must mean that the pressure P2 is equal to P0 plus rho g h. If you consider a bunch of points like this, then um, at random points at random heights, then the pressures at each of those points would be equal to P0 plus rho g into corresponding height or corresponding depth from the surface. So that's, that's pretty logical. So let's keep that result aside for now. Let's keep that in our minds. And let's just focus 
for a second on just P1 and P2. We know that P1 is equal to P0 and P2 is equal to P0 plus rho GH. Okay. Suppose I bring a piston down at, on the surface of the fluid like this and I press. So whatever force I'm applying divided by the area of the piston is a new increase in pressure that I'm applying at the surface. Let's call that increase in pressure delta P. So the pressure P1 is equal to the atmospheric pressure P0 plus delta P. That must mean P2 is equal to P0 plus rho GH plus delta P. Pretty logical. So if you bring back all of the earlier points that we had, each at each of those points, the pressure is now equal to P0 plus rho G into corresponding depth plus delta P. Our original value of pressure plus this new change in pressure that I applied delta P. So this change in pressure that I applied to the surface is getting transmitted to every other point as the same value delta P. That is exactly what Pascal said. Pascal's law states that any change in pressure that you apply to any point of a confined fluid gets transmitted to all of the points in that fluid undiminished. That is Pascal's law. And Pascal's law seems obvious when you have a result like P2 minus P1 is equal to rho GH. If that difference must mean must be constant, then if I increase any one of them, let's say if I increase P1, then P2 must also increase by the same value to keep that difference the same. And that is Pascal's law. And we see Pascal's law in action in many situations in daily life. What I did earlier was an example of Pascal's law. What I did was I pressed into my friend's stomach. That increased the pressure in his stomach. That pressure got transmitted to the air in his lungs, which pushed out whatever, was, whatever food particle was lodged in his windpipe. Uh, another example that I like to think of is when you press one end of your toothpaste tube, what you're doing is you're increasing, you're increasing pressure at one end and that increasing pressure gets transmitted throughout the fluid, your toothpaste, and pushes out a little bit of toothpaste out the other end. So there you have it, that's Pascal's law. Now, uh, we are going to look at one uh, clever application of Pascal's law and that is in the case of hydraulic levers. Thank you.